And thank you to President Mark Perrone for having me here. And thank you all for the work of UFCW. It's my honor to be here as a part of your Black History Celebration, in part because I believe that my ability to help make history would not have been possible without UFCW. Heidi was kind enough to point out that I became the Democratic leader in the House of Representatives in 2010. I joined the legislature, I was elected in 06. I joined the legislature for my first session in 2007. And from 2007 to 2010, I was a rank and file member doing the work I could do to help keep our party moving forward to defeat bad legislation and to move good legislation. But it was during that time that I met one of your very own Mary Lou Wehmer, who no longer is with the UFCW, she's retired, but Mary Lou pulled me aside and started giving me instruction, telling me about the bills I needed to know about and the people I needed to help. I followed her lead and did what she told me to do. But when I ran for leader in 2010, after the worst showing in elections for Democrats in the history of the state of Georgia, I became leader at a time when we were at our nadir. We'd lost every statewide office, the Senate was a couple of votes away from being a supermajority for Republicans. The day I was elected, five people switched parties in the House. And by the end of the year, we'd lost eight members. I tell you this to say that when I became leader, it was when we did not believe that much was possible. But as Heidi pointed out, I grew up in Mississippi. I came of age in Georgia, and I am the product of people who refused to believe that more was not possible. I am the daughter of black history. I am the daughter of great, great, great grandparents who were slaves and great, great grandparents who were sharecroppers, great grandparents who were domestic workers and grandparents who were cooks in a college that refused to allow their children the legal right to attend. And I'm the daughter of two people who had, as teenagers were civil rights activists where my father at the age of 14 was arrested helping to register black people to vote in Mississippi against the law. I was raised to believe that yes, we are stronger together in part because I'm the second of six children and my God, were we stronger together. But I was also raised to believe that my responsibility to my community, to my family and to my nation was always to be paramount. And so when I stood for leader in 2010, it was with the intention of making Georgia stronger, of making Georgia more responsive to the needs of its people, of making certain that when we have essential workers like the members of UFCW, that they are not seen as afterthoughts, but they are our first thought. That when we face the racial reckoning that is sweeping this nation, that we don't turn our eyes away. That when we talk about social justice, environmental justice, when we talk about social equity, that we mean it and that we put the policies forward to achieve it. That was my ambition in November of 2010. And then I met my leadership job in 2011. I went through my first legislative session, and then I entered a redistricting session, one where I watched the majority party try to strip away power, not from Democrats, but from the people of the state of Georgia, drawing lines not driven by the needs of the people, but by the intention of politicians to pick their voters. And so I redoubled my belief that we could do more. And I put together a plan. It was 21 pages, President Mar it was a 21 page deck where I laid out all the ways I thought we could build the state and build democratic power and we could turn Georgia blue. And one of the first people I showed this package to was Steve Lomax of local 1996 and Mary Lou Amer. I walked them through this plan where I pointed out that we were going to lose more than we would win in the first few years that the way the lines were drawn for legislative victory would make victory really hard, but that we would lose absolutely if we didn't fight. But I said, if we could fight these fights and if we could fight them over and over again, we would make progress. And it was UFCW that wrote a check that invested in that plan in 2012. And in 2012, we were one of the few states where despite the maps being drawn, we were absolutely one of the few Southern states that did not see a supermajority in the House of Representatives because UFCW and so many labor unions invested in the power of belief. They invested in the power and the strength that we had together. In 2014, I came back and said, here's what we got done. Here's where we lost. Here's what I think we can do. And once again, UFCW stepped up and only this time, it wasn't just local 1996. 
It was the national, international that said, we're gonna also support what you do. And in that year, we did not win seats, but we were one of the only chambers in the nation that did not lose a single democratic seat. And because of that, we were able to block future attacks on labor and they tried their damnedest to do it. But because we stood together, because UFCW believed in not just me, but believed in a plan of action that included so much of the people of Georgia, we were stronger together and we stood strong and we fought back. We headed into 2016 once again, prepared to make some progress. And once again, the partner at my side was UFCW, investing not only their resources of monetary nature, but people who were knocking on doors and raising their voices and going into communities that are so often left out. And that is one of the things I've always appreciated so much about UFCW. UFCW does not simply stand where it is, it goes where it's needed because it understands that the strength of togetherness cannot be met unless you're going into places where people are alone. And so I was proud to work with UFCW to win seats in rural Georgia, in South Georgia, to hold seats and to increase the representation of communities of color that had not been seen in, re in measure in the state capitol. It's UFCW that showed up again in 18 when I stood for governor of Georgia. It was at that time that I had a good opportunity to get to know even better the international leadership, to lean once again on local leadership, to have folks from across the Southern region come to my aid and fight for that election but I say my aid, meaning not just my ability to win that election, but my ability to share a message of progress with Georgians. It was UFCW that stood with me in a crowded parking lot as we deployed canvassers. And yes, as Heidi pointed out, we received more votes than any Democratic candidate in the history of the state of Georgia in an off year election because we were on the right message and on the right track. I am not the governor of Georgia. I know that and I've never been confused about that. But what I have also always known is that that election wasn't about me. It was about fighting for the things that we believe in. It was about fighting for the right to collectively bargain in the state of Georgia. It was about fighting for the right to make certain that we can have community agree benefit agreements. It was about making certain that labor rights, that workers' rights were front and center. I do not do the work I do because we have, we're the number one state for business we do this work because we need to be the one, number one state for people to raise their families and for workers to do their jobs and for when we face a pandemic, for workers to know they will be protected. We cannot be the best place for business if the people who make those businesses real cannot trust that they will be a part of the solution and they will be a part of the success. And that has always been the mantra of UFCW. In 2020, we worked together again, first to flip Georgia and to deliver 16 electoral college votes for the Democratic nominee for the first time in 28 years. And just in case people thought that was a fluke, we did it again nine weeks later when we elected the first Jewish senator from the state of Georgia and the first black senator from the state of Georgia. We made history again and again because this is what we do. We stand together, we work together, we fight together. And while the elections are done, the work continues. I am honored to be here today because I am here to tell you all the work is waiting for us. We have protested in the streets, we have protested at the ballot box, but now is our time to go to the halls of power and demand the change that they promised. And that is a change that we know will be made real because we have helped elect men and women of conscience who see who we are and understand what we deserve. But we can't rely on their good intentions. We've got to deliver our best efforts. And UFCW has always been at the head of the class, pushing people forward. When essential workers were needed across this country, it was UFCW that was at the front of the line, making sure they were holding the line. And together you all have protected millions of Americans while sacrificing too many of your own. And we as a nation owe you not only a debt of gratitude, we owe you a debt of response a response that will get COVID vaccines to every community, especially those that are considered throwaway communities. We've got to make certain that the economic relief that will come after they pass this next, next package is met by even more economic recovery when we decide that we are going to right size our economy for the people of America, especially the workers of America. 
I stand with UFCW because we are stronger together because we not only share a common belief in what unions can do, we know what union means. Union means that we are united in purpose. We are united in passion and we are poised for action. And if we do this work together, if we stand together, if we laugh together, if we fight together, if we work together, then together we will deliver a nation that is not only better for our efforts, but is once again proof that we are stronger together. Thank you so much, President Perrone. Thank you, UFCW. And thank you all for the celebration.